want to give you that it will be recording. So um, you're more than welcome to be on video uh, for better uh, communication and experience, but we understand if you don't feel comfortable um, and if you want to turn off your camera. Again, uh, thank you so much and we'll get started. So next slide, please. Awesome. So very quickly, our team consists of three uh, individuals. It's myself. I am the Director of Workforce Development. We have Alicia there who is waving probably. And then we have a, newly, a new member of the team, uh, Pablo, uh, as well. Um, so any questions that you drop in the chat, we'll be monitoring them uh, as we go. Uh, one of the team members will either answer or we will allow for a Q&A towards the end. Thank you. Next slide, Alicia. So very quickly, who we are. So we are Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation. We're actually a nonprofit organization uh, established 43 years ago to one, and our mission is to reimagine our LA economy. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we make it more exclusive and more equitable for everyone across the 88 cities and 100 areas of uh, unincorporated areas of Los Angeles County. So uh, we have a lot of different, um, an array of services that we provide. And one of them is bringing financial literacy uh, and education to our community members. So um, I think I, if you can go to the next slide, I've already touched base on that, uh, Alicia. So uh, with that being said, I'll pass it on to my colleague who will do a brief exercise with you guys that's very important related to uh, credit and, and just overall financial uh, management. Thanks, Jose. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia. Um, so we're just going to do a really fun quick activity here. So I kind of wanted to ask, engage everybody, how much money do you think you need to be able to live within Los Angeles County? $100,000. Okay. Okay. Thank you One for sharing. Day. Minimum. If you're okay. A okay. Thank you for sharing. If you can also drop it in the chat, feel free to do so. Um, we'd love to hear people's thoughts on how much you might need to make to be able to live in Los Angeles County. Okay. We have 200. Any other guesses? 100K, okay. 100, 150, 100, okay. Yeah, so some of the, wow, okay, 250. All right, well, thank you for that. Um, so one of the things that we kind of wanted to kind of get people thinking about is the cost of living. So to be able to live in Los Angeles County, um, you have to make at least, sorry, um, over $55,000. So think of all the different expenses that goes into it. And again, this is for one adult with no children. So within housing, food, medical, there's just so many different bills, right? And so... We also wanted to equate that. So if you divide it by the hours within working, that would be around $26.63. Uh, I mean, $26.63 about. And the minimum wage currently right now within LA County is close to $17. So we kind of just wanted to gauge that activity to kind of get people thinking into it. So thank you for sharing some of the answers. And next up, uh, we have our speaker. We have Carlos Selvis, who is a branch manager here within Citibank. And the floor is yours, Carlos. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. Uh, uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, now, again, my name is Carlos Selvis. I'm a branch manager for Citibank. I've been in finance for um, a little bit over 13 years, right? So I've had the opportunity to help a lot of clients find solutions, right? Whether it's from, you know, a savings account to, of course, uh, credit cards, which is our topic. Um, I've done this um, over 13 years, but working with clients, I've done it over 20. So um, it's been a pleasure. And then I always um, look forward to helping and finding solutions for, for our community. Um, with that said, we'll, we'll get started. So using credit cards, um, the topic that we're going to go over is credit cards, what they are, um, how do they help us, right? And the most important, how do we manage them? Something that my parents always taught me as I was uh, young, it's utilize credit cards to your advantage, right? Um, and help them help you in emergencies or in, in situations where you need the money right away, but you don't have that, right? If you can go to the next slide, please. 
So what do we know about credit cards? Um, one, they help us, right? When we, in the moment of need, whether we want to finance things, we can put it on a credit card. We've all been in, you know, retail stores, probably Best Buy. Hey, we have a promotion, right? Uh, would you like to apply for a credit card? And sometimes that give us the opportunity to get something and break it down in payments. And at the same time, probably save money or get a discount. We can go to the next slide, please. Now, a credit card is a revolving line of credit. It's convenient ways to buy goods and services. Again, you can buy now, pay later. They limit on how much you can borrow. And again, this is based on credit score, and that will be considered your credit line or credit limit. Must pay at least a portion of the bill every billing cycle, and this is what it's called minimum payment. And this is something that comes monthly, right? This is where you get it on your statement, tells you when it's due and how much it's due. Um, typically, the minimum payment will only cover 1% of the debt plus interest. We can go to the next slide, please. Now, important financial tools. Credit cards can help you build uh, credit, credit is worthy. Um, we all here, you know, you got to have a credit score, right? Um, as we, you know, get from high school to college and, and move on to adulthood, we always hear you got to build credit, got to build credit. But sometimes how do we start credit, right? So credit card, it's a way to build credit. It also can help you pay for emergency expenses. It's a convenient option to purchase online or by phone. And at the, at the same time, anything that you put on credit, right? And if for some reason it's an error, you can always, um, you know, call the company and you always put it on that. Um, and then also as calling customer service, you have the right to dispute certain charges for goods and services that weren't delivered as a degree. Sometimes we make a call, right? we get something online and it might come damage or we sometimes might not get delivered. Paying it with a credit card gives you the ability to call customer service and create a case on that. Can we go to the next slide, please? Now, there are some cards that are offered, right? That are not considered credit. And some of these are charge cards, prepaid cards, and debit cards. Now, charge cards typically are the ones that you get a credit, a credit line, but only to that particular store. Some that come into mind, Best Buy, Target, typically are the ones that do not have a logo for MasterCard, Visa. These are the ones that you only can buy at that particular store. Prepaid cards, we all, um, we can find them at convenience stores. It's the ones where you will buy it, right? Um, I mean, some of us have utilized this, our first card, we want to make a purchase online and we cannot obtain one. Maybe our parents did not give us the uh, ability to get one because they didn't trust that we were buying it from a you know, secure source. Sometimes we can utilize these in order to make those purchases. And debit cards, these are the debit cards, these are do not work under credit. Debit cards work with the money you have on your checking account. Typically, this comes from institutions and are tied to a checking account. So if you have $100, that's the only one you can use in that card. We can go to the next slide, please. Rates and fees, right? So the bank is providing a service. And from that service, there's going to be some fees. And also, there's going to be some rates. And this only depends if you get a promotion or you do not get a promotion or sometimes they give you promotions by mail where you can sign up for or purchase an item. And within a period of time, if you pay, then you won't have to pay interest, right? This is called annual percentage rate. It's the cost of credit express as a yearly rate. And that is APR. Um, there's also a penalty APR. It's an increased rate if you don't pay your bill on time. Some parts you offer a fee that you will have to pay for a late payment and getting paid on the uh, on the date that the statement was um, stated. And sometimes if you do make a payment more 
say two or three times, what happens, they'll go ahead and increase your APR because of those kind of payments. That's something that we don't want to do as we already paying high enough interest to pay more for our purchase, right? Um, and then interest rate, this is the fixed rate that you have on your purchases. You will find this on the statement. It will tell you exactly how much is the interest rate and how much was charged in that previous billing cycle. We can go to the next slide, please. Now, we all want to save money, right? Well, at least I hope so. Low introductory APRs, this is what you call a promotion, right? Some credit cards offer this and they offer it as an incentive in order for you to apply for that credit card. These are called teaser rates. Um, you can get it from no interest for a whole six months, no interest for a year, no interest for 18 months. What does this mean is for the period of that promotion, there will be no interest applied to your purchase. Of course, after that promotion rate is over, there will be interest charged on the purchase you need, right? These are for a limited time, can last for six months. For example, we have zero interest on purchases for 15 months. This means from month one all the way to month 15, anything that you purchase, if it was $100, it, you owe $100. And of course, after that, it's what you um, will see as a very real APR. Depending on your credit and worthiness, it can be from 15.39 all the way to 25.9. But again, these are just examples. The actual rates will come from the terms and conditions when you apply for a credit card. We can go to the next slide, please. Now, uh, rewards. Um, many credit cards, what they offered is rewards in order to reward you for the purchase that you're doing. Examples are rebates, points, airline miles. What you want to pay close attention to is how do you qualify, right? And utilize those systems, utilize that process in order to get more rewards, more points. Some of these rewards are pretty great. For example, you spend a dollar, you get one point, or you spend a dollar, you get a percentage back. Um, how does this help you, right? Well, of course, we always want to pay less for what we purchase, right? So sometimes you can utilize those points to get money back from the purchase we've done. So understand how to maintain those rewards. Sometimes those rewards expire if you don't utilize them with them a certain fund, but we always want to pay attention. Will rewards cause you to overspend? Sometimes is if you spend a hundred dollars within a month, you'll get five dollars back, right? That's just a quick example, but let's just put it into a bigger perspective. Let's say if you spend a thousand within three months, right? Maybe someone doesn't want to spend a thousand within three months because it's not under their budget. But sometimes incentives like spend. 1000 in the next three months will give you $50, let's just say. Some people, it might cost them to spend the $1,000 when mm -hmm. at the beginning, they they wouldn't, they, it wouldn't be under their budget, right? So just, uh, you know, keep an eye on that. Consider the fees when you look at rewards. Um, and then typically this will go for airline miles, right? You do get the airline miles, but there might be added That's what I charges. Want. Airline money. Yeah. So like when you make can like whatever certain transactions or certain credit cards or certain they um so again you always want to shop around for rewards. Um you have the ability to uh shop for the best part for you, and this will depend on what are your current habits, whether you spend on the grocery where you spend to add gas, where you spend more on traveling or uh, restaurants, you always want to shop around for the best fit for you. We'll go to the next slide, please. Now, what are the importance of a credit limit, right? You always want to make sure that you stay within those limits. You also want to make sure you, you don't exceed that line of credit. 
each creditor has its own standards and they may consider your credit history, current income, outstanding debt. Of course, we always want to get the lowest rate, but at the same time, when you have a better credit, you'll be able to qualify for a higher line of credit. This will go from a thousand dollars to five thousand. You know, in my line of uh, work, I've seen a line of credit up to twenty-five thousand, right? But of course, if you're going to get a twenty-five thousand line of credit, it's because the bank has seen that you're responsible when it comes to your purchases, right? You don't have a lot of outstanding debt. Your current income is might be a little higher, and they can see on your credit history that you haven't had late payments in the past five ten years, right? We go to the next slide. Now, sometimes when you want to apply for a credit card, you might say, I don't have no credit. What can I do? Unsecured credit and secured credit cards give you the ability to establish credit using your own name. Unsecured credit cards, what we call it, is the ones that provide a credit without you putting your money. So this is all the ones that I just talked to. Uh, I talked about, but again, we have the ones where secured credit card is required collateral, right? So typically they keep your money in a dedicated deposit account that might be equal to the credit card's limit. For example, you want to apply for a secured credit card to build credit, then you can put down $500. What these $500 are going to be uh, moved to will be an account. Pretty much what it's securing is the money that you'll be using. So the bank will give you a line of credit of 500 and then you pretty much will be paying yourself back. But what's this is going to help you because it's going to give some history to the bank. They're going to see that you're spending, but at the same time, you're paying on time, you're staying within your line of credit. And generally, and it can improve your uh, credit history or give you a credit history, which sometimes we don't have. And that's where I've seen that a lot of people need that sort of start, right? These are usually easier to qualify. Why? Because it's it's the bank is not giving you a credit line. You're utilizing your own money. So it's safe for the bank and it's also safe for you. We can go to the next slide, please. Secure credit cards typically have a lower credit limit. And again, this is secured by your own deposit. So you can do 500 deposit or you can do up to 2,500. Again, depending on that line of credit or that deposit, initial deposit, it's the current money that you're gonna be utilizing. Therefore, it's a little lower because it's the money that you're gonna put up front. Some people apply for secured cards and they're unable to get an unsecured credit card. So this is where I come back to building that credit, building that history that banks want to see before they can open an unsecured line of credit for you. At the same time, it can then help build the credit history. So down the line, you can go ahead and apply for an unsecured credit line. Um, we'll go to the next slide, please. Applying for a credit card. There are several options to find a credit card offer. Um, there's where you walk into a financial institution, a retail store. You can go into nowadays, you can go to online and you can compare a lot of the credit cards that are being offered. We'll break it down from what is the current promotions they're running? What is the current APR? If they have any late fees, those are always something that you want to consider it when submitting an application because of course you want to get the most out of your application right again sometimes you might get offers received in the mail um i know i get a lot of uh promotions by mail right that is something good but if you're looking to not get free screen offers sometimes we do get a lot and this is the information that you can go in and upload out of that but, you know, I'm always open for offers, right? We always want to look for the best uh, rewards out of a credit card and sometimes getting those promotions. We can go to the next slide. Now, managing your credit card, right? So we discussed what's a credit card, but the most important thing is managing it. We want to utilize these tools in order to benefit you, right? We don't want to 
spend for something that we don't have the money for, and then what's going to happen? We don't have for the monthly payment. It's going to be a, a late payment, or at some point we're over. We're spending two to three times with the original cost of that good for us. We can go to the next slide. The more items on the credit card statement, right? So it's it's important to look at the credit card statement. Sometimes what we do, we see the statement, how much do I owe? $100, okay, I'm gonna send in the payment when it's due, done, right? But we wanna understand the statement, right? So we wanna um, look at the statement entirely, right? Look at the interest rate or any changes that are happening. And most important, look at the transactions and account activity, right? We want to make sure that each and every transaction that is there is something that we authorize with fraud at, a, at its highest. You know, you never know when someone might have gotten your information and done any done transactions with your credit card that you are not aware. Of. That is the important, and that's something that we discussed earlier. Where when you utilize a credit card, there are you are protected because any charges or purchases made through the card, you can always process in the service and free basically. Yeah. At the same time, you want to calculate the interest that it's being charged, right? Um, this is something that can be found at on it on a credit card statement. And it's something that you want to pay attention to. You want to see how much you're spending on interest. Like I mentioned, we want to save money, and that's the important the most important thing. We can go to the next slide. Now, what are the steps to managing your credit card, right? You want to have good records. You want to make sure you're taking up, uh, paying attention to those payments for any mistakes, pay on time, and at least the minimum, understanding the impact of a different uh impact of different payment strategies. Try to limit what you owe compared to your credit limit. Of course. If you have a line of credit of five thousand, you don't want to utilize the five thousand because again, you're going to have to make multiple payments based on that. We can go to the next slide. So this is a quick example, right? Say you pay a TV, costs you five hundred dollars. The credit card APR is at eighteen percent. The interest that you will be paying will be one hundred and thirty-two. So at the end, you'll be paying $632, right? Now, if we're just paying, um, it will take you three years to pay that off, right? But this is just if you're paying the minimum payment, right? Imagine yourself buying something for 500 and ha having to pay $132 in interest. That's paying over a quarter of what it would actually cost, right? We don't want to pay anything extra for that reason. We're probably, you know, waiting for a good offer. That is the biggest difference, right? You can, and it, it's going to cost, it's going to take you three years to pay that off, right? But that's just with $500 purchase. Now let's, let's look at a repair, right? Your car broke down. You have to spend a thousand dollars on maybe changing some parts. The APR, that's 18%. The interest that you'll be paying on that, it's $863. That's close to the original cost of $1,000. How much are you going to be paying for the item? $1,863. And it's going to take you eight years to pay that off. Probably by the time you pay this off, you might not even have the card, but yet you still have the debt, right? Let's say you moved into your new apartment, you're buying furniture, I want a new fridge, I want a new couch, right? 18% will be charged. Look at the interest that you'll be paying. 5,363. This is double of what the actual furniture costs you. You're gonna be ending up paying 7,863 and it's gonna take you 23 years to pay that off. Now, on statements nowadays, they do show you how long it's going to take you in order to, uh, if you only pay the minimum. That is why I always recommend for my clients to pay more than the minimum. Doesn't matter if it's five dollars, ten dollars, as long as you pay more than the minimum, will go towards the principal costly for 
um, less interest and at the same time paying it off much more faster. If we can go to the next slide. Now, this is an example of paying min more than the minimum payment, right? So we go back to the example, original balance is 2,500. Interest rate is at the same, 18%. You're paying the monthly payment. And, it, and, and it's gonna take you 23 years, right? Interest rate is, uh, interest you're gonna be paying is 5,363. Total amount, 7,863. Now, second example, it's the same 18%. The minimum payment, you're paying the minimum payment, which in this case might be $25, but then you've given an additional $24. Again, it's not a, uh, it's not a, a lot, right? Total years to pay that off will be four. So if you can see 23 years versus four, it's quite a lot, it's 19 years. The interest dramatically goes down all the way to 1,000. Total amount you pay for that $25,000 purchase, it's only 3,525. So you can see the a big difference here. So I, that is the reason why I always encourage my clients to pay more than the minimum. Down the line, you will be saving a lot more money. A last example here, instead of giving $24 extra, you're giving $41 extra. It takes you one year less, but if you can see on the interest, it's $300 less if you will be paying for that item, and it will be $3,254. So again, this gives you an example of how to utilize credit in order to, one, be able to afford that item, but at the same time, not overpay for that original purchase you've made. So it gives you a clear example, pretty much not to do, right? You wanna make minimum payments, the more you can, the better. Doesn't matter if it's $20, doesn't matter if it's $40, at the end, makes a huge impact on the payoff. And most important is the interest that you pay. If we can go to the next slide. How payments are applied to your balance, right? So we have a minimum payment. We talked about giving more than that. So creditors choose how to apply your balance. They often apply to the portion of the balance with the lowest interest, right? So when you make a payment, and like I explained earlier, typically it's 1% of, um, 1% of the actual interest, and then the other portion goes to the balance that you owe. So again, when you're making the minimum payment, that is covering just a portion of it. Any additional payments generally are applied to the portion of the balance with the highest interest rate. So in cases like where you have, um, you pay $40, right? Anything after that will go to the actual uh, purchase. In this case would be, you know, 2,500. We talked about it with probably the, the couches or the fridge for your new, uh, new apartment. Um, and that is how minimum payments are get applied. Typically, they get applied to the lowest interest. This is where you want to make sure you paid more than the minimum to cover the high interest rate. We can go to the next slide. Now we're going to open it up to questions and answers. Hey, Carlos, we do have a few questions um, in the chat. Um, I can read them off and then we can go from there. If you guys want to unmute yourself, if you ask the chat and engage directly with Carlos, you're more than welcome Absolutely. to do this. Um, but with that being said, the first question was from SC. Um, he mentioned, you said you mentioned something about APR increasing when you buy something and pay it off. Um, can you kind of uh, hone in a little bit more on what that meant? So APR, and then I think maybe we can clarify that. APR increases only when you don't make your minimum payment. So first time around, you're probably going to get a fee. Second time, you're probably going to get a second, a higher fee. But typically when the interest rate goes up, it's when you have not paid your card for two, three times, right? Um, and this is caused because now the bank is seen it as a risk, right? If you're not paying your 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 payment on time, what does that mean? That you probably don't have the money, right? So what's going to happen? They don't know. One month, you're probably not going to send anything, right? So that is the reason why it goes up. 
Okay, I maybe misheard. I thought you said something about the APR increasing if you like bought something and you and you paid off early. I thought you said something about paying something off early and it was increasing right. yeah. something. Yeah. I don't and, know if that was what yeah, was about. And I, I probably I probably was not clear on that, but no, I mean, you know, typically what they want is for you to pay it on time. For you to pay it earlier, that's even better. But yeah, and, and APR will increase when you don't make your payment for several months. Um, that's what typically happens. It's a penalty that they add to it. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, SC, for unmuting yourself and, and clarifying a little bit more. Um, our next question is from Valerie Gutierrez. Again, Valerie, you're more than welcome to unmute. But her question is, when is the best time to do monthly payments to build credit score? And then the second question to that, is there some kind of formula to determine how much to pay monthly uh, to combat the interest rates occurred? So, the, I, and thank you for that question. I always get this time, when shall I make a, a payment, right? I always recommend to make your payment two to three days before, right? What's going to happen is you got to understand credit a little bit. And what happens is when your statement closes, it reflects the balance that you have, right? Every time what you want to do, you want to always have that balance to be low, right? But if you make your payment right when it's due, typically when that statement closes, it's only it's going to reflect the previous month balance. So for example, you have $1,000 balance, you make a payment of 100. When you're making it on the day of, typically the following day, that's when you're your statement is closing. So it might reflect in $1,000, right? So if you do it two, three days before your statement closes, which typically on your about, uh, minimum they do, then it's going to reflect the 900 versus the 1,000. So you always want to have your, your balance lowered. So I always recommend to do it five, 10 days. If you have the money, pay it, right? We don't want to wait until the due date, one, because you're risking it for be a late payment. Two, maybe at the time that happened, something hit on your account and you no, no longer have the payments, right? So what I always recommend and I you know swear by, set up automatic payments. Nowadays, you can set up automatic payments where it can be on the due date, five days before you put it, and then it'll just do it automatically, and you don't have to worry about it. Thank you, Carlos. Um, I did skip a question. This was from Alexander Alexander de la Cruz. Um, how do you choose the best credit card? That's a, a good question. Well, how do you choose the credit card? Nowadays, you can literally Google what's the best credit card out there. What's gonna how, what's gonna pop up? It's gonna pop up probably top ten credit cards, right? And what I love about that is that they're gonna put them next to each other. They're going to tell you these are the 10 credit cards. These are the financial institutions that are offering. And they're going to tell you this card offers 15 months of interest. What I recommend is the more time you can get a credit card without any interest, it's your best option. You also want to look at balance transfer. Let's just say for some reason, you already have a credit card. And some people might, might think, why would you get another credit card if you have that already? Well, the reason why you want to do that is because some credit cards offer, offer a balance transfer um, offered. What does that mean is literally you can get one credit card, pay off the other credit card, but what, what's going to benefit you out of that is that it's going to take care of that current debt that is generating interest to be no interest for the amount of period that they offered. Um, based on what I've seen, they're probably offered 12 months, 15 months. Sometimes I've seen 18 months, right? So that's what you want to look at. You always want to compare how many months, no interest, what kind of introductory rate they have. Sometimes they have rewards. Sometimes they have points. Um, what I'm seeing a lot nowadays is that, you know, we'll give you a percentage back on your top purchases, right? Purchases can go from restaurant, um, travel, uh, grocery stores, right? So you always want to look at that because if you're a person that always likes to eat out, you definitely going to benefit from uh, one giving you more cash back on purchases on restaurants. Or let's just say you do a lot of spending online. Some people offer that. 
Um, so it's always just looking at particular case, what is that works for you, but but for the most part, you want to look at the ones that offer the less interest rate. No, that's great advice, Carlos. Um, another question from Alexander, and Alexander, feel free to unmute yourself if you want to engage directly, but uh, is there additional fees or other other than paying off the money you use on the credit card? Um, yes, fees will be one of them, right? Interest, right? So, of course, if you're not in that introductory period or it's not a brand new card, you are going to get charged interest. Now, the beauty about the credit card is that if, as long as you pay that within the billing statement, you don't require interest. So, for example, you make a purchase of 200, but you pay it right before your uh, statement is going to end. So, on the due date, if you pay the amount of the purchase, you're not going to pay interest. You're going to pay interest on anything that you don't pay right after the minimum due date, right? So, um, you got the APR, right? Then you got late fees, then you got cash advance fees. Sometimes, you know, we have the credit cards, right? But you don't want to make a purchase out of store. You want to get the cash. Some credit cards do offer that, but they charge you a cash advance fee. Um, can range from two two percent all the way to five. Um, also, another thing to look at: let's say you're traveling abroad, you're gonna get an international fee as well. All these fees can can be found on your terms and conditions. But I always recommend if you have a question or you know, you want to see if this is going to, it's going to charge you a fee or not, always call customer service. I mean, I work um, in the back, right? Terms and conditions can sometimes be several pages. You know, I'm, I'm not one of those people that are going to go through each of the lines. So that is the reason why customer service is there. Give them a call. They'll be able to answer those questions for you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And sometimes there are some hidden fees or fees that we don't pay attention to. So thank you for right, that. Right. Yes. Um, the next question is from Monica, which is, I think, a great question is some credit cards are specifically targeted to college students. What are the difference between regular credit cards and student credit cards? I, I think the biggest difference on that is the way they look at credit. Right. As a college student coming from a high school, m most of them might not have credit. Right. So some institutions what they're doing as long as you're enrolled in school and then sometimes what they do they do a verification um as long as you're enrolled in school right um they'll be able to give you a line of credit typically it's about a thousand dollars five hundred um that that will be the biggest difference what are the the bank looking at when it comes to credit worthiness they understand that students might not have the credit and that is the reason why they started them off at a low line of credit to get them going and at the same time to establish um, a history so that down the line two, three years, they have history and they can apply for a regular credit card. And some of the incentives that come from that is, you know, if you're utilizing for books, uh, computer and all that, you get an incentive for that. I've seen it from, you know, you get $200 if you spend five, uh, you get uh, 500, you spend 1,000. Uh, and, and some of them do come with no interest. Or probably uh, what I've seen is, you know, no interest for 12 months or something like that. Thank you for sharing that, Carlos. That's really important to hear. Um, would you say, another question we had is, what is interest exactly? Interest rate is, I might not know the exactly term, but it's pretty much what the bank charges you in order to use that money, right? Um, and typically is the bank also pays money for any savings account you have in the bank, right? So with that, you are, how they're gonna pay for that, it's they're gonna charge interest rate on money that it's being lent out, right? Um, and that is just the cost of the, the, the money or the credit that you're utilizing. But that doesn't mean that you have to pay for, you have to pay interest, right? Um, you always wanna, and I always tell my clients, you always wanna shop around. Let's say you do a buy a purchase, right? And it's for 12 months, no interest, then it's good. Now you can make payments. Let's say on the 10th month, 
you haven't paid it off, then you can start shopping around for another credit card. But again, at the same time, you want to consider not applying for too much credit because that sort of also takes a factor on your credit score, right? Um, the most important here is just try to keep a good credit score and at the same time, not opening too many credit accounts because that can, that, that could, you might think, you know, if I have 10 credit cards, that's really good. Whoops, maybe not because then that will look at the bank as a risk factor. This person has 10 credit cards, maybe that's $50,000 in credit. So there's always gotta be a balance. I hope that answered the question. Carlos, uh, along with that statement uh, that you made, um, I had a question from Candy Bravo that says, how many credit cards would be reasonable to have at once? And so could you maybe go deeper into that? You know, I have a couple, uh, but you know, what what might be the number that you recommend? A number exactly, um, I, I would say, you know, let two, three, right? Um, it really comes down to you as the individual. Maybe you can have one that you go for your all you all your purchases, right? That's the go to every month. I make a purchase. Um, I can just you know give you an example. I have a credit card that I utilize for any purchase, right? And the reason why I, util I utilize the credit card it's because one, it's going to give me reward. So every time I use it, I'm going to get money back. And at the same time, you know, nowadays with fraud. Is my card is protected. So if for some reason I see a transaction that I didn't authorize, I'm gonna call customer service and I say, you know what? We're gonna put a hold on your card. We're gonna send you another one. You don't have to worry about this until we investigate it. And I'm safe on that matter. But that's my everyday. Now I might have a second one that if for some reason I need to make a big purchase and I can utilize it, right? It gives me uh, an advantage because no interest for 12 months, right? To me, I it's not it's not how many credit cards you have, but how much of a credit you credit available credit you have. Someone can have three credit cards and have about twenty thousand dollar credit. Someone might need ten cards to have that because their lines of credit are low. But um, to me, it's two to three cards will be enough. And at the same time, it's someone that's fairly starting, maybe only one. One is needed, right? Sometimes we want to think about the more credit we have, you you might be utilizing more than what you need, right? So two to three, I think it's the sweet spot. Um, but again, if you have an offer that comes in, why not if, you, if you're going to utilize the promotion at its best, right? Question that we have is from Ricky, who says, I don't spend money too much. Do you think it's worth it to get credit cards with annual fees? The ones that I do recommend are the ones that will charge you a monthly fee. Um, there are some that charge you a monthly fee. There are some that charge you a annual fee. Those are the ones that you want to sort of not get. And typically, these are the ones that, as a first-time um First time, first person getting a credit card, those are the ones that you probably get targeted. Those are probably the ones that you get by now. You got to look at the fine print. It's going to say something like a minimum um, fee of $5 a month, or if they even have $25 annual fee. Those are the ones that you don't want to sort of get. Now, when it comes to a regular credit card, right? If you don't use it, you don't get charged. So let's just say for some reason, you know, this month I didn't get, I didn't, I didn't need to use it. That's great. You don't have to pay for it. Um, to answer your question, um, I've always um told my clients, you know, have something as a safety net. It's okay that you don't need it now, but what about when you do need it, right? What about those moments where, you know, for some reason there's a pothole, you, you know now need a tire, right? What's gonna happen? You're gonna need the funds right away, but if you don't have it, you're gonna be looking for what bank can give me a credit card, right? But if you already have a safety net and you have a credit card, you will just go, let me see, I know I have a credit card here, look at, okay, great. Let me put that on the credit card, give me 30 days to pay it off, or maybe it's a big purchase, it's gonna take me two to three months. So I always recommend just to have one. If you don't need it, that's great, but just have it as a, a safety net for you when you do need it. Yeah, and I see that we have a hand raised from Monica. If you want to go off mute, Monica, and ask the question. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, 
I would just like to ask because I've heard like conflicting advice on like how or when you should use your credit card. For example, like you should use it on big purchases, but not on everyday purchases. So I would just like want to get the record straight on like, is there like a proper way on like what you should use your credit card? So, and, and again, to, to answer that question, um, to me, it's, and again, this is just on your preference, right? I like to use uh, every uh, card every day because that card will give me benefits, right? It's getting me cash back. But let's just say you don't have that, then there's no really need to put on, that on credit card. My biggest advice is if you're going to make a purchase for $200, keep in mind that you're going to have that money at the end when you get that statement, right? Now, if you're looking to buy a big purchase and you don't have the money up front, but you need that, then that's when you want to put it on the card. So it's, I guess the biggest, um, uh, you know, the biggest conflict we have out there is credit cards is not good to use them. Credit cards are actually good. It is actually a great tool to help you get out of debt much faster. And that might sound like, okay, how, how is a credit card going to help me get out of debt? by utilizing the promotions, right? It's like, you know, you have a credit card that you owe money, but you can get another one to pay that off and save yourself the interest. That's what you want to do. Uh, you know, if, if anything you guys, if you guys can take anything away is credit cards are a great tool, but you want to be able to manage it to one, not paying fees and to pay the less interest as possible. If anything, zero interest, get those promotions. Um, but at the same time, keep a good record when it comes to credit cards. If sometimes, you know, a lot of people just because they have the credit and now they're utilizing it and they come to a point where they owe a lot and now they're paying a lot of interest. And right now with interest being high, you might find yourself where you're paying a lot of interest. Uh, but for example, maybe for a thousand dollars, you're paying about $40 in interest, right? That's not, that's not where we wanna be. We wanna be in a point where you're utilizing credit cards to help us buy the things we need, but at the same time, utilizing them twice. Right? Carla, hey, thank you Sims. So oh, sorry, Alicia. I just I have a question that popped into my head here, um, and I wanted to get your take on it. Sometimes I get confused as to the cash back credit cards versus the points credit cards. In your experience, how do you navigate those two kinds of rewards when you see credit cards? So it's for that at the end, they're, they're about the same thing, right? Cashback typically is literally cashback that you can get back on your credit, on your statement, on your, let's say on your balance, right? When it comes to the points itself, it's, it's intended more to you earn enough points to obtain a gift card, right? Uh, nowadays, they are opening it more to you earn enough points to get a credit back onto your credit card statement. Essentially, they might be the same thing. But you always want to sort of, you know, put both on the balance and see which one is going to benefit me more. Some some offered one percent cash back, one offered two, three. Um, so again, you want to put them on the balance and say three percent is going to be more better than one point here, right? Um, for example, typically on points, it's one thousand points will give you ten dollars, right? So just imagine you will have to spend. One thousand dollars to get ten dollars back versus on cash back. If they go three percent, then that will be thirty dollars on a thousand dollar purchase. So it's just for you to, and again, going back and looking at the details and and, and looking at what's going to benefit me as uh, on my everyday purchases or on a big purchase coming up. Thank you, Carlos. Does anybody have any other questions that they would like to ask, Carlos? Yeah, sorry, I have one more. Um, bringing it back to my like college, I mean, like the student credit card versus like a regular credit card. Like, once you're done being a college student, does that credit card is it like transferable to like a regular credit card? Like, how would that work? Like, once you're done being a student. So what I've seen sometimes is. Um, you know, typically a term in, in school will be four years, right? So what they do is 
they start you off with a student card, but they know as you're, let's say you're making uh, payments on time, uh, you know, you're not going over your line of credit. What they'll do, they sometimes switch it to a regular card, which will offer you a much higher line of credit. There are companies that will do that or institutions that will do that. There are the institutions that for the term every year, you sort of have to re uh, re-verify that you're still in school. The minute that, of course, you graduate, you're no longer going to be able to verify you. But sometimes they do. They either you put yourself into a system or they send you an email on your a school um, uh, inbox, right? So, of course, you're not going to be able to verify because you already graduated. So sometimes what they'll do, um, you know, switch you over to a regular credit card or a standard credit card. To me, I, I, I see the benefit of getting a standard credit card. Why? Because you're going to get more, much more higher um, line of credit and, of course, more more promotions. Um, I see it as a student credit card. It's just to get you started, right? Once you get the ball rolling, of course, you want to move on to a, a much, um, you know, a much more uh, better card suited for your everyday purchases. Great. Thank you for that. I have another question from James. He said, is there a way to fight back against Discover Card that obtains um, court judgments against delinquent borrowers? Um, and maybe, maybe this will require like more details, but, you know, I, I want to say that the card or charges on it are protected. Now, if it's, you know, um, something on beyond that, where they're putting a, a judgment on it, you always want to go with the credit bureau, right? Just to make sure that in fact, you can dispute any sort of error that they probably make, but you do have that option, right? If something on a card is not what it's showing on your credit report, you can always, you know, uh, connect with that credit bureau directly and dispute that information that they're showing on the credit score. Yeah. Um. Anybody else have any last minute questions before we close out? Carlos, I actually have a question that I just thought of. Um, do you recommend if, let's say, canceling credit cards or uh, would that affect your credit score or anything like that? Um, that's a really great question, right? Um, you know, some people, they go like, you know what, I'm just going to cut this uh, card and I'm going to call and cancel it so I don't use it. I don't recommend that. Why? Because let's just say you have three credit cards, right? Two of them have $1,000 balance or a credit line. And then that third one has a $10,000 line of credit, right? And you one day you just decide, hey, you know what? I'm just going to cut this card. I'll never use it. It's $10,000. I only use the ones for $1,000. And you just call and cancel that card. What's going to happen? Your credit, open credit went from $22,000 to only $2,000. And guess what? You owe $1,500. So this is when credit score changes a lot because you went from a credit utilization of like maybe 10% or 5% to like now credit utilization of 75%. The sweet spot there, you want to be less than 30%. So to me, I will never cancel a credit card. If anything, cut up the card. That will make it a little harder for you to use it if that's the, the purpose intended to, for closing it. But for me, you never want to cancel credit because it lowers down your credit line and maybe your credit utilization will go up. And that's when your credit score goes down, right? So again, it goes back to the importance of understanding the credit score and everything that comes behind it. Great, thank you so much. That was really helpful. Um, well, I know it's close to six o'clock, so if there's no other questions for Carlos, I wanna again thank again uh, Carlos for joining us. Um, and also Citibank for helping in collaboration with LADC. Thank you so much. And I hope everybody has a really great evening. Of course. Thank you so much for the time. Thank, Thank you, you, Carlos.